Hey everyone, this is lecture number six for Remix Music, Art, and Culture. Uh, this week uh, I'll be giving a short lecture on Idiots and Prostitutes from Paul Miller's Rhythm Science. Uh, your tasks for this week, uh, week number six, are to read all of Miller's Rhythm Science. Uh, it looks a lot longer than it is, um, and it doesn't look that long to begin with. Uh, so uh, please uh, read the entire thing. Uh, it comes with a CD, so you want to listen to the CD also. Maybe listen to it while you read. So uh, your poster this week is going to be to explicate a significant passage from a Miller text. Uh, it's up to you to pick something out that you find uh, compelling or well-stated, uh, thought-provoking or confusing. You'll notice right away that his text reads a little bit differently than the other stuff we've been doing so far. Uh, so for this week, just pick something out that you want to talk about uh, in an extended kind of way. Uh, you will have your typical discussion uh, this week, 300 words by uh, Sunday at 10 p.m. And then uh, your project this week will be your media journal. So we'll talk about that. So again, uh, post Friday by 10 p.m. Uh, prompt is, as usual, in the weekly folder on Google Drive. Uh, Sunday by 10 p.m. you'll have your discussion uh, will be tallied, again, 300 words. And your project, the Media Journal. Next week, we'll be reading David Shields' Reality, Hunger. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up a copy of that, uh, now is a good time to start looking for it. Uh, order it on Amazon if you do that. So again, reading this week is Paul Miller or DJ Spooky, uh, his book, Rhythm Science. Uh, Paul Miller has become uh, more or less the academic authority on the theory of remix, uh, besides Navas, obviously, uh, who also has a book, but uh, Miller has been uh, all over the world uh, giving lectures and so on. Uh, Rhythm Science is a book that comes out of MIT. Uh, he has several other books. He's also an accomplished uh, and still active DJ. Uh, you can find some of his clips on YouTube of his concerts and also some neat things he's done. Uh, like re uh, He's built an, I an iPad app uh, that allows you to remix your own music. Uh, if you're into that, it's, it's totally worth messing around with. So anyway, he's legit. That's the point. <laughs> so again, your post this week is to explicate a passage you find particularly striking. Uh, again, it doesn't matter which one you pick. It's something that you want to spend some time uh, unpacking for a little while. You know, one thing you might consider doing is is picking out one of the terms that he's that he introduces and try to uh, define it or work through it based on some of the passage he uses, passages he uses. Uh, maybe you want to, maybe you identify with or respond to some of his uh, his biographical uh, discussion of uh, his past as an artist and how he came to the place where he is now. And whatever makes sense to you. You'll notice uh, immediately that Miller's book is a little bit different. Uh, like I said, it comes with a CD uh, of his music as a kind of demonstration of his concepts. Uh, there are also images, uh, not only and does the CD sit there in the back, but it's there sort of omnipresent with a sketch on each of the, text, the pages of text. You'll notice a pattern in the way that the book is laid out with its images. You'll get uh, two pages of text and then two pages of illustration in kind of a green glossy print uh, with samples of text over it. Uh, you'll get uh, samples of text that sort of move from one page to another. Uh, they, there's pull quotes kind of area, pull quote type uh, textual intrusions uh, throughout. Uh, the sibits of his text are going to return uh, the page between the page pairs. They're going to work kind of like a refrain in musical terms, so you'll read it in the text and then it'll keep echoing through uh, the, the image pages. So the, the book ends up being sort of short, ends up being about 60 pages or so, uh, stretched out to almost 200. Uh, even so, it's very dense, and it covers an awful lot of territory. There's an, there are many uh, references to all different kinds of things, from uh, high art uh, and theory, um, American romantic uh, philosophers, uh, court cases from the Middle Ages, uh, Beastie Boys lyrics, uh, all sorts of stuff all blended together. Uh, he also introduces a whole bunch of terms like idiot, prostitute, uh, he redefines DJ, rhythm science itself, uh, multi uh, multi 
ah, multiplex consciousness, and things like that. He, lots of different terms. He also skips around. He very rarely will follow one thought to uh, total completion. Uh, so the text comes to us in fragments, ideas that are sort of floating through and colliding into each other and really sampling and mixed uh, in a kind of way. Uh, and so you can see that his concepts or the arguments that he's trying to make is more or less uh, built into the way he's composed his book. So what is this book about? The, one of the first images or the first uh, figures that he gives us is the idiot. Uh, and the idiot is supposed to be the beginning of our loop, the, the beginning uh, of this process. So the idiot is a processing device slave to the moment outside of time because for him there is no moment of thought, no past, no present, no future. The idiot, is, the idiot is a zombie, a character straight out of Thriller, one of Michael Jackson's chorus line of decaying bodies moving to, into y'all's neighborhood. Watch the idiots dance to rhythms they don't feel or understand. There is our beginning. There is our narrative path. The person without qualities who cannot say I. The person whom others speak through, who has no central identity save what he or she knows. And what they know is what they know is that, <laughs> what they know is that they know there is nothing else. This is the narrative role of the idiot on this journey. And that is where I begin this scenario. Now, idiot obviously is a negative term. And uh, for Miller, it's going to be sort of beginning term. It's kind of blank slate uh, starting point to understand how he thinks we exist in culture uh, and how he's going to propose we instead should be responding to it. And so there are things here in the idiot that uh, are sort of unavoidable. They kind of define for Miller what he thinks the current state of culture looks like. And this is this person without qualities who cannot say I, or the person through whom others speak. Uh, this, uh, for Miller, is going to be just our condition as uh, members of a uh, global, uh, postmodern, uh, hyper-commodified culture. Uh, the problem, though, is that the idiot uh, does not feel and doesn't understand, doesn't seem to be responding, just seems to move to the music uh, without any type of uh, uh, consciousness or thought. So there are elements here of the, the idiot that are going to end up being positive or conditions that uh, are on one side unavoidable but may also be aspired to or things we want to acknowledge as already going on with us. Who's going to argue that our bodies, our consciousness, our identity uh, extends into the media. So a deep sense of fragmentation occurs in the mind of a DJ. When I came to DJing, my surroundings, the dense spectrum of media grounded in advanced capitalism, seemed to have already structured so many of my aspirations and desires for me. I felt like the nerves extend to all of those images, sounds, other people, that all of them were extensions of myself, just as I was an extension of them. Trains, planes, automobiles, people, transnational corporations, monitor screens, large and small, human and non-human, all of these represent moments and discrete, invisible transactions. Here he evokes a uh, Marxist philosopher uh, named Althusser uh, and his concept of interpolation, where essentially language already has a place for you uh, even before you're born. Uh, before you're born, people will talk about whether you're a boy or a girl, what's your name going to be, what kind of uh, crib you're going to be in. They'll start building rooms for you. All this stuff exists before you even uh, enter into the world as a conscious being. And so, you know, when his example is if, you know, you're walking down the street and the police don't know anything about you and they'll yell, hey, you'll still turn around because you seem to know that, that, that you've been interpolated into this structure of power, right? Uh, and so... Here he's thinking about this as on a large, a large scale where uh, media uh, that you consume or the media that you sort of interact with on a daily basis already have an idea of what you should be like and who you should be and what uh, types of things you're going to want to be into, uh, what you're going to want to identify with, and so on. And all of these are things that you sort of pick up uh, and build together into an identity through your kinds of tastes, right? This is an idea of identity as a kind of uh, remix, where uh, the way you I, you understand yourself through, like for example, if you were to write an online profile, what's always included in the online profile? Uh, favorite movies, favorite music, things like that, where you 
describe who you are based on the types of uh, popular media that you consume. So if I, so here's another quote from him, if I internalize the environment around me, who's going to control how the information eventually resurfaces? And so this uh, idea that you're always, you know, getting these, this influence of culture, you're interacting with all of this media that's con that's building the environment around you, uh, and so it raises a question of how does this stuff end up getting fit together? Uh, and he's going to say that that there's a logic of selection that is necessary just to even make sense of what's going on around you. You you kind of have to decide what you're paying attention to and and what parts are going to be important for you, even just to understand you know, that makes sense of what's going on in day-to-day -day life. And he's going to use the term multiplex consciousness uh, to describe this this uh, condition where we're sort of just inundated with media all the time, all of these identity positions we can pick up and identify uh, just through this large you know, mass of uh, data that we, that we interact with on a daily basis. And he's using this term in conversation with W.E.B. Du Bois' concept of uh, double consciousness, uh, where Du Bois talked about the condition of black Americans as being one of uh, a double consciousness where you are both black and also American, and these are identity positions that never get totally reconciled. Miller is also going to pick up uh, a quotation from Mingus where uh, he imagined there being a sort of trinity. And so now he's going to say that uh, he believes the 21st century self is so fully immersed and defined by data that surrounds it that we are entering an age of multiplex consciousness, where it's not just one or two uh, consciousness that are suspended and interacting with one another. It's multiple. It's all of these convergence of different media uh, and different cultures that inform those medias and those back histories and everything. It's, it's, it's just, you get the sense that it's this uh, just piling on and uh, ubiquitous, unstoppable media everywhere all the time. And so he makes it... it he wants to make very clear that he is not trying to deny, deny the racial oppression that prompted Du Bois' uh, initial interest in duality, is what he says. Uh, and here, uh, you can... He, novice came out later, but uh, this is the kind of thing that Novice was really concerned about, is, is once we move into this um, full mixture of different kinds of media, uh, are we going to lose history? If it's, is it moved out of these the important contexts that give them a meaning and a, and a sense of you know, a really valuable and important sense of history? Uh, and so Miller is going to you know, acknowledge that uh, historical question, but also this other one where uh, he says the Afro diasporic culture was a first generation X. He's picking up on this idea from uh, Bell Hooks, uh, who's a theorist who says that uh, uh, African Americans have always been postmodern. So this idea of fragmented identities where with competing uh, competing identity positions, uh, ways to think about yourself, competing cultures, uh, broken up and reformatted and so on. All of this that seemed to be some something new or was supposedly something new uh, has always been black, the, the black experience in America anyway, uh, going back to Du Bois. We've always had sort of a fragmented, con a fragmented consciousness that's trying to you know, find an identity position from diff different things that are available. Uh, and so Miller is, is really invested in this idea that any sound can be you. Uh, it's an emotion of ab abstract, it's an emotion of abstraction and attention deficit disorder. There's so much information about who you should be or what you should be that you're not left with the option of trying to create a mix of your very self. Uh, here we're responding to this uh, romantic notion that and uh, enlightenment notion that there is some like core you uh, that exists prior to media and prior to your contact with culture. And then you, you know, I am me and then I like uh, BC Boys and Fight Club movies and so on, uh, rather than uh, recognizing that there is no core you, there is no original, you have no original, there is no original self that then responds to culture. It's always composed of uh, found objects that existed before you came into being. And so rather than trying to mark off places where, you know, certain cultures have access to some kinds of uh, culture or uh, <clears throat> placing uh, limits, uh, being overly concerned with um, even questions of cultural appropriation that we've talked about before, uh, 
what Miller's more interested in is the quote development of a community of exchange. He wants these cultures to be able to interact with each other in meaningful kinds of ways. So that sense of a community is what pan-humanism is all about beyond parochial identity politics in the 1990s. So uh, Miller is really, <clears throat> really concerned with a, a different kind of a, a, a concept of remix as a kind of identity, as a kind of you know always uh, reorganizing from bits of culture that you interact with and pick up and reorganize into a, into who you are at the moment and your uh, through a kind of logic of selection or a consciousness of what you're doing. Uh, and so he's going to reiterate, no one can escape the identity clash if they bounce. I think this is supposed to be off of, and they got the word backwards. Uh, so no one can uh, escape an identity clash if they bounce off of the, quote, received culture of commercial information, not even wasps. So it, the point here is that this is a condition that, er that everyone goes through regardless of uh, cultural or racial background. We're in this place where we're interacting with all cultures all the time, all information, all commoditized. And what are we going to do about that? Siri is reiterating, any sound can be you. Uh, and so he says, each and every DJ is a walking radio station transmitting its own style. You just have to be open to different frequencies. And this is the kind of nod to uh, um, the uh, cultural diversity or cultural appropriation issue. He's more concerned that you're picking up all different kinds of stuff rather than just sticking to one idea or, or one type of culture. He said that's what makes a good party uh, when there's different shit going on, not just the same music all night. It's the 21st century. Things should be really wild. Anything else is boring. And we might think of, I don't think this is really an excuse for the kinds of stuff we were talking about last week with Miley Cyrus and, and so on. Uh, I, I think that he would still have a problem with that kind of stuff. Uh, but not because she's picking up black culture. I think that he would have a problem with it because it's not wild enough. He's, he's really not making anything out of it. It's not becoming anything new. She's just inhabiting a consumable version of an identity position. If you're able to pick up that position and remix it into something else, that might be something uh, that he'd be okay with. But uh, it's a kind of you know, easy, enterable identity position that the, the Miller here would also have a problem with. He says, quote, they record utterance as a stolen sound that returns to the self as a schizophrenic hallucinatory uh, presence of another. You can hear echoes of <clears throat> the Benjamin essay we read in this, where he talks about the actors uh, in particular, the actors uh, uh, for film and what a weird experience that is for them. It says, but today the voice you speak with may not be your own. The mechanization of war, the electro-colonization of information, the hyper-commodification of culture, the exponential growth of media, all of these point to a mechanic semiotic hierarchy of representation that models human thought as a distributed network. So again, he's re-emphasizing this idea that Consciousness itself is a kind of distributed network of information that all have ties to something else that sort of pre that predated you in some kind of way that that aren't originary with you. That you know, your consciousness is this uh, configuration and network, uh, a circuitry of its connections to all these different kinds of things uh, that are going on with your knowledge and without your knowledge uh, all the time. And so he, he really picks up on this phrase that he got from his mother. Uh, he used to ask him, who speaks through you? And this is a question he's asking us as we read his book as well. And so he says uh, near the end, the music and art I create is the end result of a life lived in an environment where almost all aspects of urban life were circumscribed by the coded terrains of a planet put in parentheses by satellites in the sky beaming back everything long ago. The prostitute scenario is about an end of definitions, breaking the loops, and watching the role collapse in on itself when it's no longer occupied. So here you see part of the issue for him is trying to break and break up the uh, preconceived units. I mean, he, he thinks of them at one point as Lego blocks. That, that identity is a kind of uh, Lego block construction where you're picking up these bo blocks and sort of putting them together into who you are, and then maybe you can take them apart and put new things together and make a new kind of configuration. Um, but he seems that, he, he suggests here that, that the objective is to destroy the blocks even, to break these loops, to break the, uh, the common uh, organizations uh, that, have be, that are sort of prepackaged. You, if you want to extend this Lego analogy, it may be too far. Uh, you think about maybe the difference between purchasing the 
uh, the Star Wars pack where it's got all of the things for you to make uh, a, a Death Star or whatever. And so you have the instructions and you fill them all out. And, oh, good, now all of these Legos add up to the Death Star. Uh, we, he seems to be suggesting here is that if we bought the Lego blocks, maybe we should make something else. Maybe we should make something that's not the Death Star. So for me, it's really uh, it's really coming down to the way you can braid your own personal narrative with the multiplex consciousness notion. The development of sonic sculpture as a way to meld music and art, and the stresses brought about by trying to blend mass entertainment with what used to be thought of as high culture. And so here's where you think here's where he is articulating. Well, he articulates plenty of places, but here's one of the places where he's he's suggesting how it is we're supposed to respond to this. And so if you can make uh, the really reductive redux, reductionist statement that uh, he's trying to explain to us uh, that you are what you consume. He seems to be suggesting here that you need to be sort of conscious of what you're consuming, how you're thinking about them in relationship to one another and what you're doing uh, with the kind of things you consume. If we come all the way back to the uh, image of the idiot, let's go back to the image of the idiot, uh, who's just sort of dancing along uh, to whatever is played, we now have a, a separate figure uh, it's a separate kind of response where you are dancing along to the playlist that you created, uh, in other words. And that's why he brings us, he brings us here to the, the image of the prostitute at the end, who's the, the end of the loop. Uh, and it's the prostitute on the conveyor belt, the prostitute uh, coming from the factory. And so uh, the prostitute asks us what we would like it to be, uh, or what, uh, how we would like our... So what does he say? I find a quote. Who do you want me to be? It's a mime dance, a pantomime of desire and projection. And what he wants us to, to pay attention to, uh, as he says on page 108, is it's a dance contest between the master and slave, and again, and maybe, just maybe, it might possess you. And uh, so you think of the logic of the, the prostitute where you give money to a person who is then going to enact your desires for you or react to your desires. This is more or less the kind of a, a, a sexualized version of the all commodity exchanges, right? I mean, you take your uh, labor power, which has become congealed into money, and then you go to the store and you uh, buy a microwave, which is going to then produce for you the things that you want, the microwave burrito. It's a weird example, but uh, and then the microwave burrito hopefully satisfies your desire for hunger, and then that's you, you take your money and buy the television, which then hopefully satisfies your desire for entertainment, and so on. Uh, and so what he's asking us to pay attention to here is that uh, when we put down our money to uh, find something to consume or to purchase something to consume that we hope satisfies our desires, it's not a one-way proposition. Uh, as he'll suggest earlier, even with his own book, uh, on page uh, 9, and so we flow across a page in the here and now, and as you process the words, as you read them, remember this, they process you as well. And so there's this give and take relationship where whatever we consume or however we use our attention, uh, whatever we, uh, whatever media we give our attention to, is also working on us and building us in a kind of way. It's, it's, it's creating our own identity. Uh, it's building our identity through these, these blocks of, these Lego blocks of media that we're, interacting with or we choose to interact with. It's an argument that, that it's really an argument that David Foster Wallace will make too, that in this, in this culture, attention is a really valuable commodity. It's the reason why uh, Google and Apple and Microsoft are all fighting uh, to get you on their platforms uh, so that you know, they can control your attention and, and uh, monitor your attention when you're looking at uh, serve you ads that maybe satisfy your desires. And if your attention is such a valuable commodity, you have to be really careful about what you give it to. And so uh, the prostitute scenario that Miller brings up here, when the prostitute asks us, "What do you want us? What do you want me to be?" Uh, it would be good to have an answer. <laughs> it would be it would be good to have a well thought out answer, a, a, a meaningful answer, or an answer that 
it builds an identity position that's useful and meaningful and uh, powerful and not one that just repeats the zombie uh, that, that returns us to the zombie uh, from the thriller where you're just sort of dancing along to whatever music gets played through you. Uh, so again, this idea of braiding your own personal narrative with your multiplex consciousness. Even if it means blending together things that are sort of hot, that are typically thought of as high culture as well as things that are typically considered low culture. So this week, I hope some of that made sense. <laughs> if it doesn't, uh, you know, like I said, the Miller is really dense. So if you have questions about things, please don't hesitate to put them in the uh, in the uh, Google Plus form so we can talk about them. Uh, especially some of these concepts like the idiot and the prostitute, uh, they they can be pretty complex because he's it's particularly because they typically have such negative connotations, and he's trying to make them functional figures for the the working culture. Anyway, this week, uh, your project is a media journal. So again, Miller describes contemporary life as overfull with media projections, all competing for our attention, a kind of overwhelming flow of media that's you know running through us at any time. And, and so uh, we become so conscious of this saturation that we hardly notice it. So for this assignment, I'm asking you to keep a journal of the of what Miller calls this dense spectrum of medium that you're encountering on a typical day. So what you're going to do is pick some day this week, doesn't matter what day, whatever day makes sense for you. Uh, it's going to be a day where uh, hopefully you can take, you want it to be a day where you're going to be able to take some time to pay attention to, the, to, to what you're interacting with. Uh, and so you'll need a notebook or something, and you want to note down all the media that you come in ta contact with. What are all the, the snippets of mass culture or culture in general that, that run across your desk at any at, any time. Uh, so anything you come in contact with consciously or unconsciously, so maybe you sit down and watch Modern Family, that would be a conscious thing. Uh, maybe you walk through the mall and uh, there's a music video playing, that would be something you didn't necessarily intend to watch but now is part of what you interacted with that day. But however it is that, that you have uh, come into contact with different kinds of media. So just sort of be ultra aware of you know, what you're seeing uh, throughout your day. And then I'd like you to write a reflection in which you discuss if and how Miller's concepts apply to your own uh, multiplex consciousness. So you're going to take all these notes, and then you want to review them and look at them, and then uh, write a piece uh, that's going to be submitted to Google Drive where you're just thinking about how your how your consciousness is composed by what you encounter during the day, or how uh, how you sort of how you experience the kind of phenomena that uh, Miller is talking about. So again, this week, uh, you have your reading, which is uh, Miller's Rhythm Science. Uh, again, read the whole thing, please. Uh, you have a post uh, this week where I'm asking you to unpack a passage that you found particularly interesting. So please include the passage so we can all find it, follow along. Uh, you have your uh, usual discussion assignment. And then also your media journal project. Uh, if you have any questions about this stuff, please don't hesitate to ask either by email or by posting something in the support section of Google+. Uh, Otherwise, uh, I'll uh, see you guys on the forums, and uh, I'll have a new video for you next week.